So now we have a 2013 Tiguan. It was actually towed here because the customer was afraid to drive it. And their complaint was that the check engine light was on, as you can see, and the EPS light was on. Uh, I noticed when I started it up that it was missing and the check engine light was flashing. So there's probably going to be a misfire code, a misfire on startup. And uh, the traction control is likely disabled because of the misfire. But we'll, uh, we'll check it with VCDS and see what kind of codes we get. So I have to admit I haven't used VCDS too much since I purchased it back in January. This is probably the fifth time. Uh, it should be auto detect. Uh, 2008 Tiguan to 2017. Let's try that. So it's going through a network scan and pulling codes from all the controllers. I'll bring it up when we finish this network scan. So we finished the network scan and here's a summary on the right side here. So anything in red shows that there's a controller fault code. Engine ABS and Central Electronics has a fault code or multiple faults. So in the engine control computer we've got intake manifold flat position sensor bank 1, P0, P2115, another flat position sensor code. Random cylinder misfire, P0300 is the generic fault code. Triple zero seven sixty eight. Fault frequency 3, reset counter 255, mileage, freeze frame data. Cylinder 3 misfire. Cylinder 4 misfire. Pressure sensor fault code. Hmm. I wonder if this is a leaky injector like that Audi I had. Because it was misfiring on a, on a uh, cold restart. 507. Higher than expected idle. Idle control system failure. Too lean at idle. Just a few fault codes. Cylinder 2 misfire. And cylinder 1 misfire. So chances are... We've got multiple cylinder misfires, ABS fault codes, tire pressure warning. Tire pressure warning, yeah, that's all I see in the ABS. Central electronics, license plate light bulb, that's important. All right, so we gotta address these uh, misfire codes. So here I'm looking at some data blocks. It just counted 38 misfires on cylinder number 2, and 3 on cylinder number 3, and 97 on cylinder number 4. I'm curious as to what the adaption, although it might be an open loop still, it had a lean fault code, so I'm wondering if it's got a crankcase vent problem. I was looking at Identifix and, you know, there's some problems with injectors, injectors leaking, causing misfires, but that wouldn't be lean, that would be likely rich. Hmm. The misfire on number four, it says, well, we believe this is active misfires, unless it counts to 255 and starts over again. I'm going to check the crankcase vacuum. So I've got a vacuum gauge connected to the uh, nipstick tube, not measuring any vacuum. It's at a maximum of one inch, it's not reading anything. Um, you can see it's missing right now, it's shaking like crazy. And it was counting misfires on number four, so we're going to have a look at the basic ignition components on this thing. I don't hear any vacuum leaks. And it doesn't appear to be running lean, although it did have a lean fault code in it. 
So in the short period of time that it's been running, it's set a random misfire code. It's set an intake manifold flap control code. Uh, it's set cylinder four misfire, cylinder two misfire, and it's disabled, uh, doesn't say what cylinder it has disabled, but it's disabled a cylinder due to misfire in all of about five minutes of run time. Um, <clears throat> One of the things to measure is the uh, fuel pressure. So I'm going to see if I can find that fuel pressure. So we're looking at the fuel rail pressure. It's measured in bar. Desired is 40, and it's actually running around 40. We're going to shut it off and turn the key on really quick. Hopefully that we don't lose communication here. I turn the key off and then back on again. If this fuel pressure leaks down as it appears to be, that might suggest that we have a leaking injector. It should actually rise during a hot soak and it appears to be dropping. Let's come back to this in a few couple minutes. Well, there it's dropped from 40 bar down to about 29, and it's continuing to drop. And that's after about two, two and a half minutes, and that's not right. So this thing's got one or more injectors leaking. The, the key is to pull the spark plugs and uh, have a look in the cylinders and see if we can see which ones they are. So there's the four spark plugs. They look relatively good. They're not black and sooty. Well, this one's a little dark. This is number one, two, three, four. Plugs are a little worn. It could use a set of plugs, but that's not the problem. What I think is going on here, and I'm going to try to get a picture of it with this camera here. So I'm looking in number four cylinder with the bore scope here. Get down past the spark plug hole here. Right there. Have a look at the intake valves on this thing. They're just full of carbon. This thing needs to be decarboned. That's the intake valve on that one. And there's the other one on that side. Just full of carbon. The actual injector itself, there's the tip of the injector. It's not wet. So I don't think the injectors are actually leaking. I can't explain why the fuel pressure actually dropped initially and then went back up again but the carbon deposits on the back of these intake valves is definitely a, a concern as most direct injected engines are prone to developing carbon deposits on the back of the valves Let's see if I can get a look at this other one over here on this side there you can see it there sorry for the shaky camera so this thing needs to be decarboned it's possibly that the valves aren't closing properly I didn't put a vacuum gauge on it to see if the vacuum was steady. I don't think it's a coil problem. There's the four coils. I'm going to talk it over with the customer. The other concern that we have is this P2015 fault code for the intake manifold runner position sensor. It says that this engine uses an intake manifold position sensor and it's part of the manifold, the solenoid to vacuum supply to operate the intake runner. It's also part of the manifold. Visually inspect the linkage from the vacuum diaphragm to the intake manifold runner. If it's broken, the entire manifold must be replaced. So we had a look at it. I'll show you what's wrong. So it's really hard to see, but this is the vacuum operator for the intake manifold runner control. And it pulls up and down on this linkage here. And this linkage is physically broken inside the manifold here. I don't know how that's serviced, but the intake has to come off to clean the uh, intake valves. And it may require replacement of the intake manifold to fix that according to the, that uh, case on Identifix. So here I'm graphing desired fuel rail pressure and actual fuel rail pressure. The actual is in the green and you can see it's decaying here. Yet when I look in the cylinders, I just crank the engine over a few seconds to get it back up to 3940 bar. When I look in the cylinders, I don't see any specific injector leaking, but I'm going to have another look. So there's a look at the injector in that 
number four cylinder. It looks nice and dry, as do all the other three cylinders. No signs of seepage on these injectors, so I can't explain why the fuel pressure is decaying unless it's going back via the pressure regulator. Uh, I believe it did have a fuel pressure code as well. Besides, leaking injectors wouldn't make it run lean. If anything, they would make it run rich. You can see that the fuel pressure is decayed now to 20, 21.6, 21.5, 21.4 bar. So, I'm going to see what else is common to fail on these. So we're back working on this Tureg here. And I've got the intake manifold off. Man, was that fun. One of the injectors came out like I expected it might. Man, they could have certainly designed this thing a little better. One wiring harness with a connector over here and leave all these things attached. Whatever. Here's the intake manifold. There's the one injector that stayed in. We got a set of new injectors to put in here. And a new manifold because this is broken in here. Right in here it's broken. Yeah, that shaft is busted. So we got a new intake manifold. I'm gonna look inside the ports here and see the carbon inside there. Wow, it's black. So cover up this oil f filter housing with a rag, and we're gonna pull those divider plates out of the intake manifold and we're going to carbon blast the intake manifold or a bla carbon blast the intake valve I should say walnut shell blast I'll get it right on the third try anyways here we go well I got one port clean let's take a look inside I'll look at the camera with the borescope it looks a lot better than it did Valve looks nice and clean now. Oh, there's a little tiny bit there in the back side of that valve. Yeah, I'll pick that out with a pick. Well, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Compared to this black hole or this one, Let's see if you can get a better picture of what it looks like in one of these holes here. Look at the carbon on that valve. Oh, we got some walnut shells blowing in there. Ah, well, that's okay, that valve's closed. So finally got the third one cleaned. Let's have a look in there. Or the last one I should say. So you can see the valves look pretty clean now. So now it just remains to... Uh, is there a little bit of carbon behind that valve? Yes there is. I had to go around the valve seats with a pick. A long pick to get the carbon out. But that one's pretty good. I ended up putting my vacuum cleaner outside the door because it's expelling walnut shells. No matter how hard you try to keep this thing clean, it's almost impossible. That's why the drop cloth or the drop plastic seems to work pretty good though. So here's the new intake manifold right from Volkswagen. They had it in stock, imagine that. I see that this is redesigned this section here it's different it comes with the solenoid the valve that controls the intake manifold runner comes with a new sensor doesn't come with a throttle body and also have eight new Bosch injectors or four new Bosch injectors I should say and a set of spark plugs to put in this thing so we're just about ready to reinstall, reinstall the injectors Got the manifold surface cleaned off and the injector bosses cleaned out. So we're going to put them in. 
So one of the advantages to ordering new injectors is they come pre-installed with the Teflon seals on them. And uh, if you don't if you don't have the resizing tool for these Teflon seals, it's it's impossible to change them. That's my understanding anyways. So there's the injectors reinstalled. New retainers, new seals. Manifold parts swapped over to the new manifold. Comes with a new solenoid. Um, throttle body swapped over, fuel rail swapped over. Dielectric grease in all the uh, injector o-ring cavities and a little film of dielectric grease on the intake manifold. Now this little bracket down here that's a brace for the bottom of the intake I'm going to leave it just sitting loose. It was a huge challenge to get at the triple square bolt that holds it onto the block but we'll uh, I think attach it. It attaches to this rubber mount here so I'm going to leave that sitting down below and see if we can get it in place after the fact. So there's the manifold partially on. All these fasteners are torqued. There's what I had to do to get at that brace down there. I reattached it to the bottom of the manifold with a 13 mil nut and then I used the long extension and a universal joint and a triple square socket to get at the bottom bolt. You can't get at it from underneath. There's a whole bunch of air pipes in the way. Maybe if you took the uh, uh, air inlet pipe out of there, but that's a lot of work too. So I left it in. So we'll continue this insulation. So there it is back together and running. Fresh oil chain. No parts left over, which is a good thing. The air filter was good, so we didn't need to replace that. We're going to have a look at uh, fuel pressure to see if it retains fuel pressure after a shutdown now. Uh, no more misfires. Seems to be running smooth. I, on initial start, initially, it had a little stumble there. There's probably some residue on the valve seats. So now we're watching actual and desired fuel pressure. Uh, the actual fuel pressure is in green. And desired fuel pressure is in red, 40 bar. I'm going to have my assistant here turn the key off and turn it back on again just so we lo don't lose communication. And what, what should happen is the fuel pressure should actually rise. Okay, so the actual fuel pressure is in green now. And as you can see over here, it's actually starting to climb 45 45.7, 45.8, and that's because the engine's going through a hot soak now, and the fuel rail's hot, and the fuel is basically contained, so it expands and the pressure will actually rise. That was not happening before with the original injectors, so even though I couldn't see one of those injectors potentially leaking, it could have been, and given the fact that we had to pull the intake off to do the intake valve cleaning and the intake manifold needed to be replaced anyways, I think it was a good call to change the injectors while we were in there. So that's a wrap.